The ColecoVision is turning 40 years old, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the many aftermarket ports, homebrews, and even a few prototypes that were unearthed and re-released so that the general public could enjoy them. Man, I have a lot of happy memories playing on the ColecoVision, but a lot of people don't know that it has a very thriving aftermarket homebrew scene. There's many games still being made for it. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you 20, 20 of these aftermarket releases. You're gonna have your favorites, I know I have mine. So sit back, relax, here we go. Arkanoid was released in 2020 and it was an MSX port, which the ColecoVision shared hardware. And so with the Super Game module added, you could play these awesome arcade ports that were made. And you know, this is a fantastic port. You know, I played a lot of Arkanoid back in the day, mostly on home conversions, but I did play the arcade a little bit as well. And if you have the ability to play this, definitely worth checking out. Battle of Hoth was a ColecoVision version of Empire Strikes Back, and man, it is awesome. Has additional features not found in the Atari version. And man, I love this game. And so uh, there's some additional things. There's a hidden game in it, as well as you can go back to your base and repair. There's TIE Fighters that are trying to bomb you as you take out at ats It's a classic and one of my favorite Star Wars movies of all time. So of course, this is high on my list. Collector Vision in 2011 published Bomb and Blast. And this is a take on Tetris Blast, which is a variation of Tetris that I love and enjoy to play. I've really been into puzzle games lately and I found myself not wanting to put the controller down and continue editing this video because you know this has just got that addictive puzzle gameplay and with the chain reactions you can do, you can get some crazy score multipliers. Another fantastic arcade port is Bomb Jack. And I know many people out there probably grew up playing the arcade version or on a classic computer port, but man, this is a good version and it just shows the capabilities of what the ColecoVision could do as there's many of these classic arcade ports that never came out but were available in the aftermarket. This was a prototype that was purchased by collectors and then offered as a reproduction cart. And wow, this is weird. I'm so glad that the ROM was preserved and offered to other people to play. I found myself wanting to go back and check this out as I haven't played anything really like it. The original release was never intended to be sold. So the fact that somebody was able to locate a copy and dump it is awesome. Congrats. This was part of Team Pixel Boy's budget releases. And this is actually a conversion of an MSX homebrew and it's a roguelike and I just love these releases and you know there was tons and tons of games coming out at that you know especially like you know 2010 to 2020 there was just a volley of releases and this is one I missed but luckily for you you can download and play it for free in 2012 this is the SG-1000 version of the game on ColecoVision and so ColecoVision got these ports and conversions from other consoles and computers of the time, and I love it. And so I'm a big fan of elevator action, played it back in the day in the arcades, even played the Nintendo version quite a bit. But I like this version, it's not bad. It's difficult, definitely for sure, but if you're a fan of those classic arcade experiences, you're gonna feel right at home here. With the release of the Super Game Module, it gave the ColecoVision the ability to offer games that required more RAM and more arcade style sound. And this is what you get with Galaga. It was just a fantastic port. It plays and looks a lot like the arcade. And you know, for fans out there, I know Galaga was a huge arcade release and it usually was right next to uh, Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man. I know for one, I played a lot of this in the arcades. In 2019, we are blessed with another MSX port, and that's Gauntlet, a arcade favorite of mine. I've talked about this in previous videos. One or two players in this port of the arcade, and you know, it's got a lot of the elements from the arcade there, but you know what? If I had this as an opportunity to play this on a ColecoVision back in the day, I would be over the moon. Oh my goodness. 
Uh, I'm a big fan of the series and so happy to see it here. Another amazing arcade conversion and one I did a video on back in 2016. You might have missed it though. And this is Gradius. And you might have played this on Nintendo. You might have played it in the arcade. But holy cow, this is a fantastic port and one that's just top notch. One of the better ones I'm showing today. Had a crazy, crazy box art and packaging that went along with this opcode game release. I know it was offered in Atari age for a long time, long gone now, but you can look at this video and answer this question for me. Do you think it's a good arcade port? Night and More taking uh, some inspiration from Ghosts and Goblins is a fantastic release. Another 2016 release. I did cover this, but you know, for many people, you know, that was years ago. A lot of people probably don't even know this came out. It was a limited release, awesome, crazy box art and packaging as well from Kote Gamers. And they offer a multitude of classic games and they also publish for retro. And so it's awesome to see these releases. Hopefully they have more games to publish for the ColecoVision. The golden age of arcade releases continued in 2016 with the release of Mappy. And I know there's a lot of fans of this arcade port. There's also a good one on Atari 2600. But man, Mappy's a fun one. It utilizes that super game module. And you know what? If you are a fan of the arcade release, it's got everything here. And it's got that catchy tunes as well with that enhanced music chip. While the ColecoVision had one of the all-time favorite Nintendo arcade games, Donkey Kong, never got Mario Brothers. Well, in 2009, that was resolved as you have it here. Really nice version of it, too. And I found myself playing this one. Mario controls very nicely. Actually controls a little bit better, in my opinion, to the arcade. Nibbly, son of Nibbler, has that just one more game aspect to it. I really enjoyed this maze style game. I don't have a ton of experience playing Nibbler in the arcades or even, even home ports, but you know, I really did enjoy what they've done here as it's just perfect for the ColecoVision. A ColecoVision with these single screen arcade games is just a perfect match. And man, if this came out back in the day, holy cow, I think it would sell very well. Well, maybe you're more into classic computer platformers, and this is a release by Kote Gamers. This is a recent one I purchased on physical, and it definitely has that cool ZX Spectrum look to it, and I'm really happy to see this release. As you know, it shows the diversity of releases on the ColecoVision. And, you know, I like a platformer, especially once very unique like this. There's no combat in the game. You're just collecting roses and avoiding enemies. Love it. If you're looking for more of an adventure platformer, look no further than the pair of Sydney Hunter games for the ColecoVision. These are absolutely brilliant. Collector Vision being a huge supporter of the ColecoVision and offering several different titles as well as publishing games from other people absolutely wonderful here this is sacred tribe the first release in 2017 followed up with caverns of death and you know whatever one you play you're going to enjoy it awesome graphics you know it's like that perfect combination between montezuma's revenge and pitfall and that exploratory aspect to it with amazing graphics man this just shows you how awesome ColecoVisions can be with the proper programming. Aftermarket game releases for the ColecoVision go back to the 90s, and this is Star Fortress. And this is an earlier release, and really excited. This was re-released as well through the 2600 connection. And you know what? I love this. You know, this is obviously a port of Star Castle, but going way back, they were still offering games that weren't available on the original ColecoVision library. And you know, for a budget release, for an inexpensive port, this is pretty good. This prototype was released in 2000. So awesome that they did that. I was able to locate a copy. I don't know exactly where, but awesome game. This is a very addictive game. You're going around fixing 
potholes and squashing beach balls. Lots to this game, fast gameplay too. Really enjoy this one, especially for an early release. Next up, we got Turmoil, and this came out this year and still available. Pretty awesome, it's got some fast gameplay, and I just wanna keep seeing these ColecoVision homebrew and aftermarket games be released, as there's just awesome variety out there, and there's some creative programmers making all different types of games, and I think it's just awesome to see these wonderful creations being offered to the public and available today. So those are the games I wanted to share with you. There's so many more and in the link below, you can go and look at all the games made for the ColecoVision and more. Some of them are available to be downloaded and played. So what do you think? What was your favorite game that I showed today? And as always, thank you for coming to my channel and having that ongoing support for me as I just hit 125,000 subs. It has been an honor to share my video game knowledge with you. And if you are new to my channel and like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading new content every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock and you have a good day.